What up, what up, Wimbush here. And a couple of weeks ago at GDC, I got to showcase this in person, but today I'm proud to announce that we can now take Cinema 4D files natively into Unreal Engine with the Cineware update. And the biggest thing about it is we can bring character animations from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. So if you're excited like I am, let's jump right into it. So the first scene I'm gonna be showing is how we can bring our Mixamo characters that are rigged up in Mixamo and I put the animations onto them inside of Cinema 4D and then we can natively take this file and bring it into Unreal Engine, nothing else needed. Now in order to keep this short, I don't wanna go through the entire process of how I did this. Basically, if you come over here and just look, I have Psylocke from the X-Men with the Mixamo rig and then I have a character definition tag onto some of the motion capture that you can pull in from Cinema 4D. So if I come over here and I come down into my asset browser and I look for a motion capture. You might not know this, but there's a ton of motion capture that's already inside of Cinema 4D. So if you come into an asset library, you can bring these over and connect them to your figure. And a nice thing is if you have it rigged with Mixamo, you can automatically align these up within a matter of seconds. Like I said, I do have a tutorial on that. And then also for the clothing rig right here, I did a tutorial last week on how to get this cloth to interact with your character and the ground there. So make sure you check that out as well. But what I'm gonna do is just save out this file. So before in the past, if I hit Control D, and then I look at my Cineware tab, and inside the Cineware tab, we used to have to click all these on, and then we had to save our file out and bring them in with Datasmith. But with the new interchange update with Unreal Engine 5.5 and above, and Cinema 4D, the latest version, we're able to just natively take our Cinema 4D project, import it into Unreal Engine, which is exactly what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna just stick with the same file used at GDC. Just come down here, save your file as. So just save out your Cinema 4D file like you typically would, nothing special. And before we move over to Unreal Engine 5.5, I do want to note that we are using Redshift materials for this character. So whenever I bring her in, we're going to have this character animation, we're going to have this cloth deformation, and we're going to have the Redshift materials all come inside of Unreal Engine 5. So this is Unreal Engine 5.5. I'm just using a scene that I got off the marketplace. Let me know if you want to link to it. I will direct it to you down in the comments. But if I come up here to edit and come down here to plugins, up at the top where it says search, I'm just going to type in C-I-N-E and that's going to bring up Cineware by Maxon using Interchange. Now Interchange is the new way that we're able to connect Cinema 4D to Unreal Engine 5. It is new with Unreal Engine 5.5. So moving forward, this will be the way that we're going to bring everything in. Before in the past, we used Cineware by Maxon. This will no longer be updated along with the Datasmith plugin back in like 2019. This is the first way that we could bring everything in. But the only way that we're able to bring in our character rigs is going to be with using Interchange. So you want to make sure that you have this turned on. And once you do, we're going to exit this out. And then we're just going to come up here to file in the top left hand corner and come down here to where it says import export and at the top right here where it says import into level this is what we want to click on so i'm going to left click on this and then i'm going to look for that cinema 4d project file that we just saved out so right here where we have psylocke underscore gdc this is the one that i was working with so i'm going to left click on this and then come down here to open and then with this browser opened up i'm just going to click on the content folder which is our default folder and then i'm going to click on okay and just wait for everything to translate. Depending on how big your project file is, this might take a few moments. So just be patient and let this translate everything. And once it's done, it's gonna pop up with this browser that says import scene. So right here where it says stacks preset, you wanna come right here where it says scene and you wanna left click on this and you wanna select Cineware. Now once you do that, it's gonna pop up with this scene right here and we do have an option for geometry cache in which we do have our class sim, which will count as a geometry cache, right? So I'm gonna select this right here and then I'm gonna click on okay. And then everything else here, I'm just gonna leave at default. I'm gonna click on okay again. And now you'll see that the scene just changed here a little bit. So now everything is gonna be set up for Cineware. So we don't wanna change anything in here whatsoever. We just wanna come back down here to where it says import again. We're gonna left click on this. And then again, I wanna select my geometry cache right here where I have cloth. I wanna left click on this. Then I'm gonna click on okay. And then same thing here, leave everything selected that you have here. And I'm just gonna click on okay again. And now you can see inside of our outliner, it added this stack. And this is gonna bring everything over from Cinema 4D. Everything is gonna be baked in. So you're not gonna have your character rig per se. It's gonna bake all your animations into a file. So down here where we have our content browser, I'm just gonna minimize this by hitting content drawer so we can see everything in full here. If right here where it says Psylocke underscore GDC, that's our Cinema 4D project file name. I'm gonna left click on this one and then I'm just gonna bring her into the middle of our scene. 
So if I move this back and let me move her over maybe somewhere around here where she's going to do that animation, I'm just going to pull it up and you can see that I brought in our plane as well. I'm going to delete that because the only reason I had that in my scene was because I wanted to have something for the cloth that they kind of hit against once we were doing our cloth simulation. Again, if you want to see how to do the cloth sim, make sure you check out my tutorial from last week. I'll put that down below. But if I come over here and I'm going to click play, you can see now we have our character. She's doing her stretching motion. We have the character with the cloth. Everything's colliding against the ground. And it's just playing through inside of a loop. So we didn't have to do anything. We just imported our scene. And now everything is brought into Unreal Engine. It's colliding with the lights. You can see we have the shadow against the ground. And also we have the redshift materials in there as well. So everything just came over nice and easy from Cinema 40 into Unreal Engine 5. So I know people are going to ask me, can you use this as a playable character? You can't do that yet. This is more for if you're doing cinematic scenes or if you have an NPC inside of your game or if you render out cinematics. This is a way that you can bring your characters over from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. But that was used in Mixamo. So I want to show you how we could use a custom character rig from Cinema 4D that my buddy EJ had rigged up and bring that into Unreal Engine as well from Cinema 4D. So everybody out there, you might remember this robot. If you saw us on a DAT tour, the world tour that we did a couple of years ago, this character was made by EJ, AKA iDesign. So make sure you check out his stuff as well. But he built this out as a custom character inside of Cinema 4D using the character rigging tools. And so no mix of whatsoever. This is still gonna bring everything over into Unreal Engine. But before we do that, as we can see right here, everything is built with redshift materials, but let's bring over some redshift lights and some redshift cameras as well. So if I come down here to where we see our camera, I'm just going to left click on this. Now we have a redshift camera in here. We can look through the lens. We can actually just move this back maybe a little bit somewhere around there. So let's look at them at maybe like an angle, something like that. And then let's bring in the light maybe from the top as well. Just for demonstration purposes, we want to show that we could bring redshift lights in there as well. So I'm going to select this right here and let's just maybe do a spotlight. So you can see we're making a really basic scene in here. So we just have a redshift light. We have a redshift camera and then redshift materials on top of this character rig that we have here. So if I look inside of here, these are all the bones that he had created all within inside of Cinema 4D again. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to save this file out like we had did before. So I'm going to hit Control S just to save my scene out. And now we're just going to bring it into Unreal Engine. So I have a brand new scene here inside of Unreal Engine 5.5. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to the top left where it says File. Again, come down here into Import into Level. Left click on this. Then find my Cinema 4D project file, which is right here, EJ's Robot, and click on Open. And then I'm going to come right here to where it says content and I'm just going to click OK. Now I'm just going to wait a few moments for this to translate all the files that it needs to bring over. OK, so we're going to see this again where it says import scene. So just same as we did before, we're going to come over here to where it says stacks preset right here where it says scene. I'm going to left click on this and we're going to select Cineware. Now, since we don't have anything that needs a geometry cache, I'm just going to leave everything as is. So I'm going to come down here and click OK. And then I'm just going to leave everything as is here as well. And then come down here and click OK again. So now we have our stack set up for Cineware. We don't want to click on anything down here once again. We just want to come down here to the lower right hand corner. Click on import. And then again, we're going to click on OK. And then the next window, we're going to click on OK again. And then we're just going to give us a moment to import everything. So once we're done importing, you can see it right in our camera. We have our spotlight right here, which is our red shift. I'm going to make our content drawer disappear by clicking that down there. But let me scroll in here a little bit, hold down the right click and just hit WASAD. And now you can see we have our character inside of our scene. So I'm just gonna take this floor, just lower it a little bit here, because you can see we have our spotlight shining down on it because it brought a redshift light in here. And I'm just gonna use the play button to bring it in just as it's like an active game. So I'm gonna move our player start, just have them facing towards our robot. So that's the neat thing about this too, because you could use this for gameplay. So I'm gonna come up here where it says play, click on play. Now you can see we have a robot in here just waving at us and it's a perfect loop. So we could bring in perfect loops as well. Just imagine if you had this inside your video game as an NPC character, you could have them loopable in there. We have the redshift materials working. We have the redshift light coming down from the top. And also if you want to use this as a cinematic, I'm gonna hit exit to pop out of this. But if I come up here to perspective, we come right here, we have a redshift camera. I'm gonna left click on this. That comes in blurry. That's just something that Unreal Engine does. It even does it with Unreal cameras. 
But if I select my redshift camera here, come over here to where we have our details panel right here under focus settings, instead of manual, we're going to click on disable just to disable that. And now you can see we're looking through our redshift camera as well. We have a reflection coming in here. And sometimes this happens whenever you have redshift materials converting over with some type of transparency. But you can come in here inside of our content drawer. And let's look inside of our folder here. So you can see that I brought over our animation. We brought our character over, materials and textures. We're going to look for material. And right here where we have smudge glass, I'm going to double click on this. And this is the nice thing too. Because if I come over, we can look inside of our details panel. It built this material out for us so we don't have to mess with material nodes or anything we can come in everything is nice and organized just how it would be with mega scans so now i'm going to come up here to refraction and we could just mess with the ior here so you can see as we mess with this how it's changing it just click on save whenever you're happy with it but you just go through here and just manipulate but all in all i think that's pretty neat how we could bring our cinema 4d files into unreal engine and just have everything working in real time so I want to say thank you again to Maxon for actually bringing me out to GDC so I could showcase this in person and thank everybody that came out to visit me at the booth when I was showcasing this. And if anybody else out there has any type of questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. I try to answer them to the best of my abilities. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you on the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.